to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't forget to click subscribe. It's time to learn. Hello and welcome to the studio where we paint away the stress of everyday life here in Wales. Thank you very much for joining me in the studio today. And um, yeah, I thought I would just paint a fantastic scene for you because I don't know about you, but I've been in lockdown for several weeks and um, I'm just dying to get to a beach <laughs> to do some sunbathing. And, you know, it's holidays are the fantastic thing. That's what we've got to look forward to. And um, I just got this image in my mind lately that... I thought we could paint some sort of a tropical beach scene and uh, that's what I've decided to do today for you. So um, without further ado, let's just put some relaxing music on and see if we can't get some painting done here. So just picking up a little bit of ultramarine blue and white and just spreading that. I'm using a little bit of um, cardboard today with a bit of gesso on it. I'm just bleeding that blue and white together and making what I think is um, a summer sky. Maybe a tropical sky, I don't know. Put a little bit of glare on the canvas but I'm playing around with my lights at the moment in the studio so I'll get it right so I just want to darken up the top of the sky so when you when you paint in something like a, a sea ski escape you want the top slightly darker than the horizon because it gives that um, depth the illusion of depth and as we come further into the foreground, we want to increase that darkness. So the further away something is, it, it'll be more blue, but a lighter color. Things in the distance seem to be, they seem to have this little blue tinge to them, but they also seem a bit lighter as well, especially when you're painting a landscape or a seascape or something. It's important to remember to try and keep that. So the closer things are to you, the darker they want to be. That's all I'm trying to say. So I'm just gonna throw in a little bit of white into the sky now, a bit of titanium white just to emulate some clouds. And what you don't want to do is work hard, work smart. If you're not too sure how to paint clouds then just practice and practice and have a look at the sky and get your iPhone or your little camera and take a few pictures of some cloud formations and keep them as reference but when you come to paint them don't try and paint them 100% accurate just be very loose and free like you can see that I'm doing today I'm just wisping up the top of those clouds with the edge of the brush and just allowing them to be cloud shape there's no set pattern to clouds clouds are individual unique you'll never see the same pattern again so don't stress too much about painting those clouds so I'm just gonna darken the sky up a little bit here with a little bit more while dreaming blue and if you feel as if you I've made a mistake or you you want to change things then change things it's the end of the day this is your painting it can be anything that you want it to be the art of painting is allowing the paint to paint allowing your mind to be free and relaxed and above all don't stress at the end of the day it's just a painting. And when you're starting out, when you're starting to learn, especially with acrylics, is don't fight with them. Let them be what they are. 
than a water-based plastic paint. To my left-hand side, you can see that I'm using a palette. It's a wet palette. What is a wet palette? Well, basically, it's a plastic box with some tissue paper or some um, kitchen roll, anything that's absorbent like that, which is which is soaked with water, and then you've got some parchment paper or greaseproof paper on the top of that, which gets damp. That stops the paint from evaporation. So acrylics dry by evaporation and they dry and they form a skin. So if you put in paint onto a plate or something like that, what you're gonna find is they're gonna start getting sticky. This is gonna start getting dry. You want to maintain the moisture in the paint and you want the paint to be a creamy consistency so don't over thin with water otherwise you're going to find that the more water you put into the paint the quicker it's going to dry Once you get used to using a wet palette and you get used to using the paints in a certain consistency, don't over thin your paints with water, that's important. No more than 45%. There's guidelines on the manufacturer's websites if you want to pop along and have a look. So you could be using Winsor & Newton or Golden or all those other um, makes out there go onto their website and, and check to see what they recommend I'm using my own made paints because I mix these paints by hand I know I know how they're gonna perform it's taken years to build my own particular formulas of paint mixing What I've done there, I've added a little bit of cardamom yellow into the ultramarine blue just to give the sea that little bit of green tinge about it. Just bring that bit of life in those waves. Well, there's no waves there at the moment, but there's going to be. I love this style of painting. I, I pop in the studio sometimes, I think, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna do a quick study painting. And I really enjoy that, I really do. And I get a great kick out of sharing these experiences with yourselves. And some of these little paintings I will take on to a bigger canvas and, and improve and sell them. Don't be afraid, at the end of the day, it's just a bit of canvas and paint, or a little bit of cardboard and paint. I'm just gonna chuck a few waves in now. Just using the edge of the brush. I'm just what I call like a little chamfer. I call this a chamfer stroke. You see that I'm just, just pulling the edge, going flat against the canvas and just getting that possible ripple effect. Again, the sea, the waves, the, nothing is set. There's no set pattern to anything with the sky. It's nature, it's every wave, every ripple is individual. When you relax into painting like that and you think, well, it is what it is, before you know it, it starts to look realistic. A, a painting is not about realism. It's not about being photorealistic. I've got nothing against photorealism. If that's what you want to do, that's great. And that takes a lot of time, a lot of um, practice, 
It takes a lot of effort to get to that stage and to be that precise. Painting to me is more about creating an atmosphere. It doesn't have to be accurate. It just has to be believable. When you look at a painting like this, you're gonna go, oh, that's a beach. You're not looking at a photograph. You're not gonna be standing there and looking at detail like you would if you had a photograph in your hand. This is more about atmosphere. And when you paint like this, you paint to relax. So picking up a little bit of Naples yellow and a little bit of burnt umber, just to get that sandy type of look. What color is sand? How do you paint sand? Well, you paint the color of sand, depending where you live and depending where in the world you're actually painting. Sand could be so many different colors. There's some beaches around me, there's just shells and not actually sand. At the end of the day, what is sand? It's they're very, very, very minute grains of stone and shell. And as you could see, I've got a little bit of shadow next to the water because where the waves are lapping up against the sand, and washing back out, that sand is gonna be a slightly darker color. And this is what you've got to think about. Tones, shade, light. Where's your light coming from? Where the shadows are gonna fall? Just relax into that. I've got a little bit of glare coming from a light onto the sand, but don't worry, it'll soon dry. And always remember that acrylics dry two shades darker. Just touch that little bit of shadow onto that edge just to define the line of wet against dry sand. So this is what I call the underpainting stage and I've got the bones of the colours in place. Now thinking about bringing that perspective towards the viewer's eye. So I've got to bring your eye into the painting. What am I going to do? I'm going to put some palm trees in place, I think. Simple process, just using the brush and then bringing those trees slowly to life. I'm using a bit of crimson and some burnt umber, just to give me that little bit of a purpley color, a little bit of white, because I wanted a nice warm shadow color in order to define the highlights and the mid-tones when I eventually put them on. So what I'm trying to do at the moment is just get those shadows in place and give this a nice warmth against that brightness of the sand and the coolness of the sea. You can also see that in the distance those trees are got very small to the eye and in the foreground they're getting bigger that gives the illusion that 
This beach is spreading so, so, so far away. I was just going to dry that off. It'll help with the glare. You can see how it dies back to a matte finish. Because that's what acrylics are. They're a matte paint. If you want a little bit more of a shine to these paints, then you can add some glazing medium to it. Which will give them more of an effect of a an oil painting. Or you can varnish your paintings later on, which will lift those tones of the colours out. Again, just using that brush on the edge, as I did previously, to get a little bit of foam wash coming off the sea as it laps up against the sand. Bleeding that back into the sea itself. As it does, steady things, steady birds in the trees, steady clouds, steady sunrises and sunsets, and seascapes and watch how the light affects different times of the day. And be more observant and use those observations into your little study paintings. That'll make you much a better artist, much better artist. Have an understanding of how things work, like light and shadows. And not all shadows are black. In fact, there's no such thing as black in real life. You can make shadow colors and blues and reds, browns. You can make dark colors. Black is very harsh. Although, it's not wrong to use black in paintings. You've just got to be careful where it's used. Bringing in a little bit more foam. In my mind's eye, this is just a, a nice tropical beach with a very light breeze blowing through those trees on the, on the beach there. Wow, I could be sitting there now with a pina colada or something. This is what I do sometimes if I can't get out and sit at the beach, I'll paint the beach. put a bit of light onto this sand now. I just want to lighten up and sparkle the sand a bit. Maybe I've just changed the music as well as I lighten this. Because I'm feeling in a bit of a bit of a lighter mood. <laughs> Everybody staying safe today and we live in a wonderful world and as artists it's good to actually paint these things that we, we see. See my little Molly barking in the garden. Just a slightly light green, I would say about a mid-tone green, just to get started. To 
just putting small little dotty marks in place there. I don't want to destroy all that lovely shadow colour that we, we worked really hard on. cardboard is approximately 10 by 8. And there's nothing stopping you selling these little study paintings. If you, if, if you sat back and go, wow, I really like that, I'll sell it. And I have sold several, several of these things over the years. just poking out up the top. I think I'm going to paint a couple of palm trees because what's a tropical beach without a couple of palm trees? I'm going to put a couple of them in. I can imagine sitting under there and having a pina colada out of a coconut shell. Oh wow! This music was uh, specially written um, for me. It's called Into the Light by Lara. It is under copyright uh, to myself, Clive Five Art of 2020. And I, um, it's a fantastic bit of music and uh, I'm so grateful that it was written for me. And I play this in my headphones as I paint along. It just helps me relax away the stress of everyday life. So I'm just going to put a bit of sh I put a bit of shadow onto the beach there because obviously there's going to be some cast shadows from these trees and things. And these are all mixtures of different things like palm trees and I don't know some sort of foliage just allows for that idea of a tropical beach I'm gonna put a couple of seagulls in place because I like my little birds it just sets the scene Molly saying, that's a really good painting, Clive. <laughs> Don't forget to um, comment, share and subscribe. There's plenty of um, videos on my channel. All you need to do is type in hashtag Clive5Art in the YouTube search bar. All the videos will pop up. I upload on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. I try to bring you different content every time and hopefully share some tips that I've learned in my 35 plus years of painting away the stress of everyday life. 